good evening good evening hopefully everybody is doing well uh, this is the last minute I had a lot of stuff going on today I had to, some appointments to deal with and got a lot of stuff going on in the background here let me make sure everybody can hear me uh, I know I put this up really really late like 30 minutes ago I posted this um, I wasn't honestly sure if I'd go live today but uh, I am here and we are rolling the, the, the question here, the, the topic of today is from an incident that happened yesterday. Um, we'll go on to the topic real quick first here, and then I'll, I'll do some call-outs and things like that. Um, yesterday, I get calls all the time. I get calls from people I know occasionally. I get calls from this guy said, hey, give you a call and stuff like that quite often for stuff to sell, basically. Somebody sent me a picture. Uh, well, more than just one, quite a few pictures. I'm big into vintage toys especially like Microman and things like that. Um, if you don't, don't know what Microman is, it's the precursor to Micronauts. Uh, it's, it's just the Japanese name produced by Takara versus the U.S. version produced by Mego with a different name. There's a, another, the Lords of Light is like a, another line after that, an intergalactic, and there was a European name of it. But anyway, the point of it is I went to look at some what were supposed to be some rare toys, something that should have been worth some really good money um, in all, and it's one of those deals that looked too good to be true for the price. I do run into stuff like vintage toys. Maybe I don't show everything because I don't, I don't do haul videos very much these days. Um, anyway, the point of it is I'm looking at these toys and there's one thing I got out just here's just an example toys. Uh, you might not be able to see the green, unfortunately. I didn't even think about that. But the point of it is though, like on toys like this, you've got the, the bubble, the bubble here. Yeah, you can't see it very well. It's invisible almost, but you've got the bubble there. And what people are doing these days, and this is like the second or third time I have seen it, Micronauts were reproduced. They were redone in, in say, geez, maybe 99, well, probably even later than that, probably like 2006. And what they're doing is they're taking some of the reproductions knockoffs with old vintage cards that somebody already opened up and then resealing stuff onto cards. There was broken parts and all, all types of things like that that were obviously repaired. The one way I figured it out real, real quickly, not just the fact that the bubbles aren't quite right, is, is the nose test. And I know that may seem a little weird, but I smell most everything I buy, especially if it's supposed to be vintage. As crazy as that sounds, you'll see me out in public doing this. You'll see me in some of my videos, including uh, the last, it's been a long time since I got one of those, but the last antique one. You'll see me saying, can you smell it? Can you feel it? Your senses can can rule the day when it comes to this stuff. Now, had I shot out the money for this, it would have been a reasonable price if they were good. It would have been a real good price if they were all good, but they were all pretty much sealed or jerry-rigged. Somebody had even touched up some of the cards themselves, thinking they were good. See, I don't know if it was the person who listed them for sale or they were a reseller and got uh, snaked out from somebody else where they bought it from. I don't know. I looked to see if it was an old Craigslist posting maybe and something that I, I didn't know about or something locally before I even went out there just to make sure there wasn't some scam. Um, met in public place and the whole works is stuff was in the back of a van. Now I run into probably 30% of everything I go to see there's a bunch of just junk or seated lots or repaired or mis misrepresented stuff. Now, I never, I don't call anybody out because I don't want a big scene or anything else like that. I just pass and move on. I think that's honestly the best, best thing to do in, in those situations. I get sent, and I'm bringing this up because I get sent stuff um, patrons are welcome to anytime. I get sent stuff constantly, images and things like that. Check this out, check that out, which I love to look at stuff. So for me, it's a great thing. I, I mean, it, it's, it's enjoyable to me too. And some of it comes down to, I can't tell 100% looking at a picture on something, but the nose always seems to know when something isn't, isn't right. You can honestly and sincerely smell the difference if you rub your finger on the plastic of any of the bubble cases or anything like that, the bubbles, 
and then smell it real quick. It doesn't smell right. That the smell is gone. Even if you're not an expert and can't tell the difference between old bubble plastic and new bubble plastic, there is a difference. You can tell with the loop if you're really good at it. Um, but the biggest signs usually, even if they glued it on to the face of these correctly, is the smell. The the glue never never quite goes away. If you ever get a brand new shirt that has a printed design on it and you first open it up, it's got that vinyl, vinegary smell sometimes. If it was printed in-house or something somewhere in this country, it seems. That's most of what I, I we tend to see. And I hate getting those shirts, but you, you'll it'll fade and stuff. But with the glue that they use for most all the ceiling, the action figures, you can smell it. And, and going into smell, too, because, again, it, same with old stuff. Is something old. I get this all the time. I can't tell from a photo when I'm looking at stuff. This is from the 1700s. And if you've ever smelled a real full-fledged book from the 1700s, they almost pretty much all smell the same. You can't recreate what a piece of paper made out of rag and stuff. This is made out of like, it has fabric in it. That's why it's so good still. That's why I could still make airplanes and do whatever I wanted with this. It would, it would do anything you want. It's just like normal paper, but better. Um, some of this has hemp in it and stuff like that, but it absorbs all that. So I smell paper to tell if it's, you know, authentic. Because you can, you can fake age anything. I could show you, well, I'm not going to show videos on how to do that, but I could show you, if I wanted to, how to fake any of this kind of paper. I could get the ripples in it. I could even make it look laid, like old laid paper, if you really, really wanted to. It's a way to do all that stuff. But, you know, the point of it is your smell test. I, I've never had somebody get one over on me through the smell test. I, I'm, and I'm not just saying that just because this, because another topic that's brought up over this exact same thing is, and I've been asked this, this question here, I'm going to tell you probably a hundred plus times. I've got some stuff that's mildewy and musky smelling, you know, and I hear that all the time because I used to buy stuff like that. The first response I always tell you, this is business. So, you know, no, no disrespect to anybody who's ever asked me this question. There's quite a few people have. I've bought stuff like that before in the past. So it's something you're going to run into. Sometimes you might find something that looks incredibly good. It's got some huge potential value, but it's water damage, maybe has some mildew on it and smells really, really bad. Now, I don't mind if something's damaged, but I personally would not recommend buying anything with mold, mildew, or that scent to it at all if you can strongly avoid doing it, my opinion. There might be some libel issues if you sell something with, say, mold on it and, and you know, they get sick from something similar or something. I, I don't like to mess with stuff like that. I don't like the smell. There are some ways to get rid of some of that stuff. Coffee beans are one I, I've done many times. Ivory soap mixed with that and airtight bags. And it takes weeks and weeks and weeks without using harsh chemicals to get rid of any of that smell. And you're never going to get rid of it 100%. You Maybe it'll dim it down and get rid of like 95% of it. But if you put it up to your nose, again, it won't pass the smell test. It, it just won't pass the smell test. I've done every trick in the book when it comes to trying to figure out how to clean, how to repair, how to get rid of water damage to some things. And I can get rid of water damage. I can get rid of a lot of stuff. But even if I'm doing all that stuff, it 99% it of the time is going to have some bare bone smell at the end of the day. It, it, it's a given. And I don't mind the smell of vintage paper and books and stuff, any of that stuff. I, I don't mind it. it it's if you've ever been into like a museum in summer and it's kind of hot in the place, it's got that age smell. We went into a house in, in Raven, I think it was Massachusetts, and the house was built, New England area, the house was built in like 16-something, and it was an antique mall. This was years ago. We flew up into Logan and we went to Brimfields and drove all through up Vermont, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and we spent some time up there. Lovely place. Go back anytime I had a chance, but the, the whole house smelled like that. If, if you're looking at like a handle, these are questions I get all the time, literally all the time, including today. I've had similar things about stuff like this. The beans, the coffee beans are one of the ones I always recommend because I don't like chemicals on anything. I have uh, very bad reactions to plants and all kinds of things ever since a, a spider bite. So I, I don't like chemicals at all. I don't, I don't try to use anything. You know, I, I almost never spray poison or anything in the yard or anything else like that because if i'm outside and i'll break out it, it's i'm constantly issued with that so i don't like chemicals on anything 
There's no uh, other way. The smell test is my best free tool for stuff like this. It's not going to get past it. If it's been in an attic, it's going to have some sort of smell. Even if they're not smoking or anything else like that, it's going to have a smell. Even when someone sticks um, like air fresheners in stuff. And I see people do that. We got something the other day that someone stuck air fresheners in. There's chemicals in that. So again, you go back to that fact. I don't like to stick anything with chemicals in anything I may out ever, 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 ever on eBay. And I, I personally wouldn't recommend it. You're going to run into somebody at one point that may have an allergic reaction to something in there. We've got a, a, f a friend of one of our kids that has a severe allergic reaction to, to peanuts. And if you've ever seen that in real life, oh my God, it's, it's, it's horrifying, you know. He's got to carry an EPA, EPA, whatever they're called, those EPA pens or whatever they are, with him like 24-7. You know, um, I, I, he, he told me they cost like three or 400 a piece. It's some horrendous amount of money. It's got a little case with it and stuff. He doesn't go anywhere. Can't sleep over. He can't do anything without having that with him. Uh, just just as an example, though, but the, again, that's what I rely on with everything. You would be surprised at how good a repair can be on, on anything, ceramics and all kinds of stuff. And, and what you usually ends up giving it away is the telltale scent of paint or a lacquer. You can't just get rid of lacquer smell. It, it's all that kind of stuff. All of the, the scents, your, your, your main senses, senses are, are like your best tools you know, for anything. I'm shown photos and all types of paper all the time. And I get, I'm frustrated that I can't give them a straight answer sometimes because there's, there's a, a very slight difference when you're looking at an image that's like a reprint or a piece of paper that's a reprint versus the real thing in a picture. If I'm looking at a picture, but if you've got it in your hands, like on an old photo, a reprint. And I'm bringing this up because I, I, there's, there's some photos I'm not 100% sure, and I hope they're good, but I can't tell from somebody else. And looking at the surface, um, even sometimes the, the smell itself, but the looks, the feel, all that goes together to identify and authenticate a lot of the stuff that we sell. Plastic marks figures. If you don't know what those are, M-A-R-X, look those up. promise you there's a ton of money in them. I got a video coming out soon on Toy Soldiers, but um, it's going to go in depth. It might even be a couple parts, but um, like those, there's recasts of those. And if you rub them, you rub them, it heats them up, and you can smell the scent off the plastic. And they don't use the same plastic they used in 1964, so it, it's a totally different scent. And if you've done enough and handled them, between the scent and the feel of the plastic itself, plastic when, like act like uh, toy soldiers, I should have grabbed some, I got a huge box of them over there now, but toy soldiers, they're thrown in a box for years and years and years and years, and the surface I'm not it's not like wax but you I can if I was blindfolded I could tell the difference and feel between a new Marx figure like a new cast one and a vintage one you you can feel the difference I mean it, it's stuff like that your, your your five senses are incredibly huge tools for a lot of this stuff if you're looking at something and it's too good to be true you know I go from the aspect that it's fake it's fake it's fake until it's real for everything because there's so much fakes out there now. I don't even want to get into why we gave up um, on depression glass, but I'm going to touch on that for just a second here because I talked to somebody here and they might even be in house right now. I haven't looked at too much there. Um, but on air purifiers are good, just FYI. I would always recommend those if you've got vintage paper or anything else like that. Dehumidifiers if you're in a moist environment. I like to have a a good climate controlled environment and that means that you're you're able to not fluctuate the temperature of your storage facility more than say 15 or 20 degrees at the very very most so if it's really hot outside and your air conditioner doesn't work you can build up humidity and stuff anyway there's there's a big thing with that if, if you're in the records and you have a massive amounts of records or whatever you're into and you store it you, you'll understand that just like i would never i've got comic books mounted on the wall mostly tom corbett space cadet or space patrol or dell painted covers of space issues and stuff all vintage originals i do love 10 cent comics golden age um but they're not in the sunlight none of my my collectibles that are on a wall are near the sun and if if i would have ever done that or if there is a chance that sun's going to be beamed on them i do get the uv glass for it just just fyi um 
issues nobody ever talks about. Nobody ever talks about stuff like that. Uh, just display purposes. People send me stuff from time to time. You know, as, you know, to the auction professor and stuff. I do have a mail e uh, mailbox address just for those of you who are interested. But uh, not asking for anything. So just FYI. Um, hang on, just a second here. I'm sorry, I'm just distracted here for just a second. Yeah, I got into the last second. Um, again, a lot of times, and probably on a given week, I could be asked 100 times on these same types of questions. You know, how can I tell? How can I this? How can I that? Like uh, old photo-wise, a glossy 8x10, a glossy 5x7 has a 100% different feel if it's vintage and original usually than the, the later ones. A lot of the times people will recreate vintage photos and things and use modern day paper and stuff with it not even no attempt they're not even trying to get the specialized paper and it's really thick and the or they're using like a cardstock and trying to print photo quality on a on a printer or something like that which i've seen occasionally here and there there's even people on ebay who who print um uh, postage stamps and currency maybe a little larger than life but that still doesn't negate that they're postage so i mean that kind of thing would be you know easily caught by someone because of the printing technology just like your senses of feel another question i got and i, I do have something i i got up for patrons you can buy but not pushing that but the, the the point is like on engravings there's engravings are raised off the piece of paper you can feel the 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 ink and if you can't feel with your fingers, there are ways you can get it to show up where you can see for sure if something's an engraving or not real easily. Um, it's things like that, like a, a bill is engraved. Uh, so you can feel it when your finger rubs across, you know, the actual printing on it, the ink on it. Again, these are all things you need to know. Uh, uh, lately, I guess there's a lot of rash of people getting taken i should say i've had some people taken by for postcards some hundreds of dollars of supposedly of valuable postcards turned out they were modern reproductions and there's been a lot of things going on so glassware i'll, I'll just touch on as i said i kind of sidetracked on there but we used to go in heavy to pink depression glass and some of the other colors too but mostly pink sharing cabbage rose my wife at one time had like hundreds of pieces of that and there's so many fakes out there now. We bought it from a very reputable dealer that specialized in depression glass. And we were young back then. And uh, we did buy it and sell it. So it wasn't like we were just buying it. But and the, the, we trusted this person. Very well known in the area. Everybody who said, hey, go check him out. Go check him out and stuff. Well, after a while, when we started to you know, know our, our stuff and knew the glass, and we, we checked out some books and stuff, it turned out that like 65% of what we had had purchased you know this is one of our bigger mistakes was was bs it was modern day or from the 70s and stuff that was like rehashed of the originals you know so the, some of those molds were around for years so just because you know they were originally made here doesn't mean that somebody didn't acquire them some of them had marks some of the expensive pieces like tumblers and stuff this is true this you can you you could probably run into this still today but she had some of the tumblers for sharing cabbage rose we had a whole bunch of different patterns she's got a couple books still here but um they would grind down where the actual mark was the copier there was like an r mark or something on it they would grind those off and then rebuff the glass couldn't tell they just literally ob obliterated the the copy markings so you thought it, it looked just like the old ones they even had the little tiny bubbles in the glass and the whole works Turns out a lot of those were, were made like overseas and stuff from what we understood. And I looked into it years ago. You can check it yourself. I'm sure you'll find some articles on the, the mega amounts of uh, reproduction and modern day uh, depression glass. And that goes for carnival glass. I've seen a, a lot of carnival glass that's reposed to be from, say, 1920s and 30s. And it's probably more like 70s and 80s and even into the 90s. Um, there was a bull that we had run into once before, and it looked really nice. It, don't get me wrong. It was worth what we paid for it, just as a decorator piece, if nothing else. It was like 5 or 10 bucks or something like that, but probably wouldn't have paid that for it if, if I didn't know it was, it was a reproduction. And the saddest thing about that bull that we got is that it was a 
it was it was a FTD bowl or something. It was like a funeral bowl. It was from a funeral arrangement, and it looked it was a real nice bowl. It was all the iridescent, and you know, I, it looked good. It looked good as gold, just like a lot of the military items there. I'm going to be going to, and we're going to be videoing. I do have permission from the the guy, but we'll be at a a military show coming up soon here, and I'll bring some footage back. Um, there'll be some reproductions there, and I'm going to literally talk about that. And I've already uh, talked to somebody there that we've we've bought from before as well. So. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully get some more information on that because I've got a lot of people asking on military with the buttons and stuff that I have up too. So I don't mean to just just start yapping here, but if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up here. Do try to give out honest and sincere information. My nose saved me a lot of money. And, and, and before I get over there, just last comments on this. If I didn't check out the scent, it did look good. Everything looked good. It was done properly. Bubble to, to make a bubble is easy. You know, I've got a vacuum table here. We can make any kind of bubble. I could copy the Star Wars ones, originals, and the whole works. You just take a mold from one that's, that you already have. And it's not that hard to get a, a bubble off of a Star Wars figure. They use the same ones for a long time. So anyway, you got to be careful. The nose works. Uh, I, I passed on, on well, a potential $1,500 or better, or better probably, because the some of it was re-glued. I don't care if there was a piece or not at that point. I wouldn't want to buy those items. And then I'd be stuck with them for one. Chances are I'd never be able to get in contact with the person again. He probably changes his number or something. But I would have to, you know, just chunk them. I'm not one to go and try and resell them as is. I would never do that if I smell the glue on them. You know, or, you know, it was pretty obvious that, that something was going on. Again, I, if, if I hadn't done this for so long, I would have never you know, thought about that, nor would I have realized that they could have been fake in the first place. You know, you've seen so many Star Wars toys or Micronauts or Shoguns or this or that in a box, you know, black hole figures we saw the other day, all boxed up originals from the 80s, you know, the original ones. I even saw Tron the other day, too, in the box. Uh, more than I was willing to pay for it. I wasn't going to just make eight or ten bucks. It just wasn't worth my, my time. It was cool. I almost bought it just to hang on to, but anyway... Let me uh, pop back up here. Hey, Duncan, how are you doing? Uh, glitch this week, unable to dispatch orders. The status would not change to shipped. I had a call to eBay. They knew about the issues. If they See, here on YouTube, if there's an issue with like your channel, not just yours, but across the board, there's a message board. I can see when something doesn't work on there because many times you won't have any of your numbers show up for days sometimes until they fix it. You'll have a big gap and there'll be a day or two where nothing shows up. So your numbers are off or your numbers won't be the same in, in three different spots and, and stuff like that. So they always announce it. I don't. If, if somebody reports something, I can instantly find out if there's some new thing that somebody's catching. And there's, there's rarely anything that's affected us. And if it does, they they fix it. They, they give you updates on it, which I, I never hear from eBay. You know, that's why I say with the media mail thing, it's pretty much intentional. If they can't fix it now, I, I can, I can, I've done the database design and construction. I took that in college. We had to design our own database. We had to, you know, inject the, the, the whole works. We started from type. We had to type everything out. It wasn't like we had a, a program to write all that for us. If you turn something off, it's not that hard to turn it back on. Unless it was meant to be turned off. That's all I'm going to say. That's my opinion on, on that. There's no way there's anything else going on other than it's intentional. Who knows what kind of deal they have. In my opinion, there may be some deal with the post office or whatever the case may be. Um, I called this out the other day. Locally here, Amazon now delivers all their own packages is what, what we're told You know, by our, our post office. They stopped doing the end... Uh, last run delivery. And for those who don't know or don't mess with Amazon very much, with Amazon, like uh, they'll drop off stuff at your local post office, though UPS it there before they had their own trucks here, and your local post office would do from the post office to your house delivery because they were already going there. So that was the gist on what they were doing around here. But now they're not getting this large influx of, of packages because Amazon has their own trucks. I saw them driving around like two or three months ago, maybe, the first time, and I was like surprised. But apparently they have a warehouse somewhere close by, which I have no clue where it's at, nor do I really care. But So my post office, as well as many other ones, once this starts to go in, could see some other financial issues is, is my concern. Um, watch what's going on with the post office. They're passing some stuff by the end of summer, so which could affect prices. Again, they want to slow everything down 
and charge us more for the same, for, well, for not even as good as services we had before. Now, I know uh, the post office isn't technically there to make money, but it's doable to do both. You know, there's other services they could deal with. But anyway, not to rant and rave on that. Chop, chop, busy, busy, work, work, bang, bang. How are you doing? Hey, Daryl, how are you doing there? I think I think you had something posted. I think I commented on it. I answered everybody. There's a new video up for Patreon as well. It's so the other half. It's like 30 plus, 30, 34, 35 minutes there. Um, I, I still have an SEO. I don't know. I, I waiting to get, if anybody did see the last one, uh, I did get a lot of good feedback on that sort with the, the wordage I use and things like that. Um, I got a lot of people asking on showing the repair on some of the items that we got to with a magazine that I, I showed out to. I may may do that on a YouTube video. I don't know. Um, they usually don't get a lot of good feedback, and I don't get a lot of views on it. And people, you know, a lot of people just don't seem to be interested. They want to see a lighter or a Hot Wheels or or something like that. Um, I did put a video up this morning, which I usually don't do in the morning. Uh, it's on Hot Wheels. I've got a few pretty nice early ones here. Uh, the prices on uh, Hot Wheels are, are like pretty high right now overall. It's got to be a primo copy. I mean, you can't just throw a you know run of the mill Hot Wheels out. It's got to be something unique or different or Hong Kong you know patent or copyright versus the U.S. Sometimes that means a big difference, the interior and stuff. But anyway, I got that video up from this morning too. I did not put a video up last last night. Sales wise here, if anybody wants to give shout outs on how your sales are going, I've had mixed, mixed results. For us, man, we have been in just the last couple days, and I'm no brag or exaggeration, we hit over 2,500 in just the last couple days. Lots of buttons, lots of historical stuff. Uh, paper has been selling like mad lately. Um, not just here in this country. I, I do still ship through, you know, global shipping and all that stuff too. And we do ship to some other countries straight, um, you know, because of that stuff, I don't have to worry as much, but I do use eBay's uh, international shipping option. Um, once it reaches them, I'm free and clear. So that's what I, that's what I worry about. Um, I don't wish, you know, anybody to be lost of the item, but if it gets lost from the time eBay gets it, uh, until it, it gets there or doesn't get there, eBay is responsible to cover your loss on those items. And if it's lost in eBay's possession, the feedback would be removed as well. So I personally think that's one of the better things that they did for shipping. I know they messed up everything else, but that's one of the better things because I do use it. I don't care if it bills me at the end of the month. We've had bills for you know a couple hundred bucks extra for that shipping option, you know. So I, I don't I don't worry about it. it's 12, 13 bucks or whatever it is depending on where you ship it to um, anyway. Let's hop back over here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Razilla review, how are you doing? Here we go again. Yes, we are. Mr. Hale, how are you doing, Bob? I think you had something in there too that I responded to if I'm not mistaken. The creamy one. I'm intergalactic. I just had Intergalactic on uh, by the Beastie Boys, and I probably had it cranked up to like 95 out of 100 on the volume scale. Um, I, I like the Beastie Boys. I was just reminiscing about uh, the loss of uh, Yuck. Um, I think it's Yuck. Brain dead today. Yeah, um, uh, I can't. Th I think it's Yuck. My my brain is. I know maybe it's not. I'm brain dead today. I'm sorry. My my days. We've we've been working a lot of hours here. I don't know about everybody else, but this is your. Your fourth quarter rev up. You should already be working on fourth quarter as far as I'm concerned. We've been just slamming listings up all over the place. Um, and some of the places we list one spot, it automatically propagates to, to other spots. Um, I did. We do have our Shopify uh, active, but it's not open to the public as of yet. So I will have that. There's going to be articles and I'll have some how-to things on there and, and stuff like that, too. So I'm not just trying to market a bunch of my stuff. There may be or may even not be a bunch of stuff for sale on there at, at all. I'm not really sure where we're going to go with that because the whole point of it isn't necessarily that. Um, anyway, I get a lot of questions on this or that. What do you do? There will probably be a bunch of mix of stuff that I do and stuff like that, too. Um, I've got some more artwork coming up. I know I'm, I've been a little lax in there. We pretty much filled our, our house the other day with a purchase and... I'm just been trying to move it because it's it's more more than I I really should have I should have just said no but you come out to a deal and the deal's like you know really really good and you're 
you're tossed up over the space issue and, and I guess the the profit margin ruled out on this one here um, I may show a video of it but it, it's it's it was a it's been a god-awful mess for the last few days since Saturday evening or so but um, Hopefully, we are getting some sales information in here, too, from folks. Hey, Annie, how are you doing this evening? What a weirdo. Yeah, I hear that a lot, so I won't won't be offended. Wolf Den Family Resale, how are you doing? Any ideas for a 52-year-old just starting out? Your brain's your biggest, biggest feature there. I would say um, investigate everything. Know how the site works. Know how shipping works. Don't just... I would I would list one or two items is my personal recommendation something cheap something that's not going to have an issue something that's not going to be breakable something simple that should sell for you know at least five or ten bucks so you can get your your feet wet would be my personal recommendation when you first start out and this is what I've I've said to some other folks too depending on your skill set if you've never been a reseller you don't know vintage or you're just picking random stuff up pick stuff you know first obviously and, and then work from there but don't list stuff you don't understand or don't know i would never recommend someone listing you know like a thousand dollar record until they're sure on the grading how to ship it making sure all those proper things are taken care of before you do it because if you ship a a record and it, it's damaged in shipment oh my gosh you could be sol with that one there and get a bad feedback for your first one if it's a high dollar one it's possible that that may not ever be returned to you and you could still have to refund it as well or it could be damaged in the mail or a grading scale man if, if you're selling a thousand dollar record and i get the record questions all the time and i'm going to give you the answer to the one i hear constantly but if you're selling a thousand dollar record the guy buying it or the lady buying it they they know they're grading they want it what you say it's graded darn well better be graded that way if it's not i can almost guarantee you on a thousand dollar record you're gonna get a ding you're gonna get a negative feedback or something for improper grading if you grade something higher than it is it's worth more so in a sense if you don't grade and this goes for comic books too or any type of pay anything if you don't grade it properly you're overestimating its value which it could technically be a crime if it's intentional so that's why i say always understand the aspects of it you know records are easy if if you spend the time you're going to probably have to play them which is the number one question i get do i play all of the records that we buy no i don't i don't play 98 99 percent of every record i buy i do not play ever ever again i can i can uh site grade them pretty much you can pretty much tell if you've done it for a while it, it's pretty easy to tell what defect what issue on a record will cause you a blip or anything else like that when in doubt i'll play it if i'm not sure or if my finger if i can feel it with my fingernail and it's not with the grooves or even if it is sometimes if it's a deep one a deep scratch or a gouge you know or if let's say it's a scuff but the scuff is deeper into the record sometimes when a scuff is deeper in, it could have melted the top edge of the plastic on a disc and when the needle goes in there it's not going to play properly there could be like a little tiny lip coming out from the friction of the vinyl being you know rubbed aggressively that caused the the abrasion i don't know if anybody i'm sure i might be a loss some folks but if you ever seen a scuff on like a 78 it changes the color from that nice glossiness to like a gray spot on it and the same thing with 45s 33s and 16 speed records so hang on let's pop on down here linda Cortland, how are you doing good evening as well uh judith moore love your show my ebay is terrible not sure why if you're new and i'm not trying to insinuate anybody is but when someone tells me they're new the first thing i usually would find out is by looking at the store i'd see low value items items in categories that are flooded and drastically flooded items that you know in general don't have a, a high selling rate now i i don't worry about a sell-through rate on the vintage stuff it's not a thing for me now if i'm selling something that's nos and you know like an fba or something that's you know new old stock ra items and stuff i need to know the sell-through rate with those just because i don't pay attention to a sell-through rate for the vintage and collectibles for for the most part doesn't mean i don't do it for everything else with the collectibles the only thing i look for is overall 
category specific. I don't care about the items. I just want to know if the category itself has a trending sell-through rate that's that's standard and and on a level playing field, like sales-wise. I can pretty much set my clock by how our sales are, month after month after month, week after week, day by day. Next Thursday, we'll probably do about this much. Next Friday, I'll probably do about that much. And it's things like that that you can establish, you know, patterns and stuff with. Um, let me hop back to, to some if there's any other questions or anything else like that. That's the first thing I would look at, what you're selling, and then look at your titles, look at your images, and look at your pricing. Those are all the things you need to do and get into. Research them. If you researched them when you first listed something and six months have gone by, I'd go back and look up some of those items. If you've got no watchers on something that you, you thought was going to be really good, go back and research that item. Look for keywords. When you research to use as few as uh, as many words as you have to, define the item in Terapeak. Use Terapeak. And then if you have to look at something, Terapeak already has the last 90 days where you can click on it. I don't know why they don't do the blow-ups on the thumbnails, which we know they used to have, and all suddenly it's gone. That's one of my pet peeves with that. You have to literally enlarge your whole screen to be able to see the thumbnails. And that's your your cheat sheet for getting away with eBay removing the blow-ups and the thumbnails in Terapeak. You change the the size of your screen from 100% to 2 or 300%, and then those thumbnails are big enough to see. Just FYI, that's what I do. You know, If you've got two side-by-side uh, 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 monitors, it's easy because you just set one always to that, and that's the one you open it with, and you can price search on the other one, you know, keyboard it off on the other one. So, anyway. Jeff Loftus, good day to you as well. Pops Block Shop, how are you doing? When was the last time you had a haircut done? Seems like your hair got shorter. Bring back the long hair. I got, I cut it a month or so. I actually cut it myself just because I don't, I'm not a big people person lately with everything going on. Um, I, I probably won't do the long hair anymore. I do love long hair, but I, I don't think I, it does my, it, I just feel old, I guess, with the long hair because it just looks, I don't know. I felt like I looked haggard, I guess. I don't know. I'm not trying to be vain. I just, anyway, I don't feel as old as I look when I have the long hair, I guess. I'm a I'm a old school headbanger too. For those who did don't know, um, I go way back with heavy metal and stuff. Uh, Mr. Hot Wheels, hey, how are you doing, Mr. Hot Wheels? I'd imagine you probably saw the video, but Chris Sword, how are you doing? Heather Costello, I I we had a family movie night the other night, and we've seen it before. What's the name of the movie? Arrival with um with um shoot. I can't think of the girl's name in it. Anyway, we watched the movie Arrival. That just reminded me of that. Um, Costello, Evan Costello. They're they're the aliens in in Arrival. And I was a big Evan Costello fan. So, Richie Z, yep. hit the like button. Yeah, if you are enjoying the conversation, I do always forget to say that. It's a constant slip of the thought on that one there. Let me uh, go back here. If anybody does have any questions here as well. I'm not kidding on the scent thing. Uh, again, I know people are probably thinking I'm just stupid or crazy. And I get comments like that too, but I, your nose knows. I mean, I'm telling you, I smell all kinds of stuff. If it's vintage wood and it doesn't have a smell or you can, you can smell, you can never get rid of that, the, the new lacquer scent. It, it takes years for that to go away. You can always tell like new stuff. We bought uh, a couple tomahawks not, not too long, long back. And the smell was just just perfect. I mean, the, you can feel the wood. It's it's light wood by that time. These were these were almost two hundred years old. But wood at that age, it's light. It's got that smell. It's got that feel. Two hundred year old wood that's all dried out and it's been around. It's been handled and it's got you know oil from your hands on it from hundreds of years. Has a look, a feel, a scent to it. And I'm not exaggerating. I. I I'm passionate about the stuff that we we buy and sell, and, and I know everything you can think of about the specifics that I I sell routinely. The smell of them, I, I can tell the smell. I can tell when someone's messed with certain things. I was saying there's a way to get rid of um, some of the mildew and some of the smell, like a mildewy smell in paper. But when you do that, then I can tell that you did that. Not everybody would. It's it's a very very uh, 
scant odor, but it's still the, the chemicals you have to put this in. Again, I don't like to use chemicals. That's why I'm not going to call it out. But there is a substance you can use that will mostly kill all of the, the mildew smell and actually get rid of it a little bit. But um, I, I've, I, I've seen a lot of the conservatory videos. Um, there's a bunch here on YouTube, actually, believe it or not. Um, there's a few that are just awful. But I love repairing stuff. I love bringing stuff back to life. You know, I, I, I like that. I, I would love to have been, you know, had life been different, maybe uh, 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 antiques and uh, like a museum restoration expert. That would be awesome. Touch, you know, like a Da Vinci or something, and that would just be great. But uh, Yeah, the, I always, the, the notifications too. The notification for today's live show is totally my fault. I didn't get the 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 um the the post up in time you got to do it like more than two hours ahead of time and i know dom's great in that because he always does his like a day or two in advance and i really should but i'm, I'm terrible on on some of that the, the, my priority is usually my day-to-day -day reselling activities and unfortunately i i was just talking to dom about that we were texting back and forth well yesterday but you know my my i'm fought between i love doing this stuff too but I, I get really excited into the, the collectibles and stuff. If, if you've ever found something, just not necessarily value-wise, but something you've always thought was the coolest thing in the world and you finally got one in your hands, the feeling is like exhilarating. If, if you like metal detector or your bottle digger, whatever you are, and you get that, that one one item that's that's you've always wanted, that's how it feels like you know half the time when I'm out sourcing. I love finding vintage toys. The same ones I had as a kid. I got a couple Star Wars here uh, just the other day from Jedi. Uh, the, one of the last ones. It's uh, Rancor Keeper and uh, TIE Fighter Pilot. And there's one more. It's one of the last group. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe it's one of the B or A wing pilots or something. Um, but anyway, I, I get thrilled on that stuff. Like the, the board game. I got a board game video. I remember... All but one of the games in there, honestly. And I, I remember that because I was the the nerd who, you know, we played Dungeons and Dragons and I played video games back then. I liked sci-fi movies. Um, I snuck out when I was eight, like five times. True story. I snuck out and we walked, me and my brother, like four and a half miles in the middle of summer when school was out to see Star Wars, you know. And, you know, back then it was probably, you probably wouldn't have let me in, you know, in a, in a modern day theater. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we, we went and did that like five times. I was so into it. And everybody else was into, uh, you know, sports and all that stuff. It's not my thing. I played baseball and I was cross country, but I just, I like the running. I didn't really care so much about the sport, you know. But anyway, I don't watch any sports anymore at all. Um, I like pool. I, I play pool too. Can't say I'm a shark, but I do like playing it. Hope everyone is doing well too. Thank you, Heather. I just bought some die casts and model kits from a smoker's house. Any idea on that smell? See, when you're talking about big items like that, I do the coffee beans. We grind up like the most aromatic coffee beans you can imagine, and I'll dump those into a sock, just a normal, uh, like a tube sock, and dump them into the sock, tie up the sock. <clears throat> Put the items in a garbage bag with the socks. Sometimes I'll just load up with three or four socks. Sometimes it's usually the cheaper grades of coffee that have that, that smell. And I know you're going to say, well, but what about the coffee smell? Once they're in that bag with the coffee, I keep them in there for like weeks. Because I got a, we got, you know, I got a place I can stick those out there. I don't, wouldn't keep them out in the sun or anything else like that. Keep them in control. After a few weeks, then I'll shave some ivory with a potato peeler. Just shave a whole bunch and put them in the another sock. New clean bags, new, new everything. Usually that's enough to get the scent out. It'll smell nice. There's no chemicals involved either. Ivory soap is, is pretty much chemical free for, for what it is. And at the end of the day, worst case scenario, you can, we've got screen racks, so I can set stuff on screens and you can just set it outside in the sun. And usually the sun, just for a few hours, will get rid of the rest of the, the really heavy uh, uh, ivory soap smell. I guess that's the take on it. If it's mildew smell, that's that's really hard to get rid of if, if there's like black spots on it because it's embedded into the fabric. If it's The older it is, the worse it's going to be um, for for it being locked into there because the older fabrics like you know fabric or the older paper newer stuff the the mold mildew and stuff's probably already deteriorated the the paper itself and there's not much you can do about that either 
I mean, there are some ways you can acid dip paper and which will stabilize it and, and get rid of the, you know, any more damage from sun or deterioration. It would pretty much n neutralize what's destroying, you know, vintage paper. Vintage paper like this, though, this is cheaper vintage paper. This this paper was made in like the 1870s and it's, it's what's called laid paper, but there's a high fiber rag content in, in paper like this. If you, if Look up thrashing mill for those who are interested in, in knowing. I've looked into all this aspect of, of paper because I mess with paper every single day of my life. I'm, 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 I've got a stack of paper, you know, over my head in, in shelf after shelf. So I've, I've looked up everything. I've made it in college, you know. I took a class just so I could, you know, get every aspect of it. I know how they make laid paper in real life. You know, that's why I say you can recreate a lot of this stuff. You can even recreate the the... The printing you can buy vintage, you know, the uh, the letterpress and actual uh, metal printing press letters. It's not that hard to recreate this. They've actually recreated some of these. You just have to know the F's and the S differences and stuff like that. And I've seen fake copies made to look like 1700s. I even got a fake coin up here that's actual sterling, not sterling. It's it's um, nine something, but it's a uh, it's a doubloon. It's it's made to look just like a 1700s coin and I got a real one to compare it to too but um, you can tell the difference you know they're not forging a modern day co uh, coin it's just trying to scam a a um, collector and I'm, I hate people who do that personally and I, I like I don't it frustrates me too like with the buttons you'll see a lot of people dating stuff or saying it's civil war most of what I see that says civil war on eBay isn't civil war just plain and simple but um, those are my best recommendations, Mr. Hot Wheel. Susie, Arizona, how are you doing? I have three cases of leather-bound books with a musty odor that I haven't listed yet. I should say there's a difference between a musty, musty scent and vintage paper. People mix those up. So I wish you could smell. I wish there's like smell o vision like in Futurama. I wish you could smell what this is. It would be... I think it would be good for everybody, and I, I know, again, this is where if you ever find books, a uh, book is the best best source, a book from the 1700s, smell it. Smell the paper itself, and I, I tell you that because if you've smelled it once, I doubt you'll ever forget that smell, and there's nothing like it. It's not bad. I, I can't say it's good or anything. It's just, it's it's old paper. It's, it's the smell of age, and you can't, I've never seen anybody ever be able to recreate that where someone with a good sense of smell couldn't bust them on it. Because there's always some telltale thing or some little hint. It's just not right. You can't recreate, you know, 250, 300 years worth of age and, and get it down. And I mean, Mother Nature and age in general uh, made it smell like that, you know. And, and that's key. I, I, I always smell it. Uh, you watch some of my videos. You'll see me put stuff. The wife does it, too. You can always tell like shirts and stuff it's 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 that's what's always drawing me because the smell when you open up a freshly printed shirt you can always smell it even for days and days until you've washed it many times uh let me go on down here with those books again I, i'd try the same thing i i don't recommend anybody ever putting air fresheners or it's all chemicals and may not be harmful to you but people like me you know, it's bothersome. I mean, I'm just telling you. I, I, I would rather just be honest and say, hey, it's it's got an aged smell or it's got that old bookstore smell. Something along that line in the, the listing. Because, like, the paper like this, it, it doesn't stink. It's not, it's not a, to me, it's not a foul odor at all. You know, I, I know what foul odor, odors are. It, it's, it, it's history. It, again, if you've ever smelled old clothing, uh, two, three hundred year old clothing, and there are pieces even even from 1920s or before. Even even that has that scent because a lot of the fabric would be wool, and vintage wool absorbs absorbs scent. The older it is, the it's like um, aged fine wine has a different scent than you know brand spanking uh, newly um, wined you know bottled wine. It has a different scent to it. It it, it ages it, and, and paper's the same way. Wood's the same way. You know, there's there's nothing like this the scent of it in, in my book. We we go down to the museum, you know, when we can, and there's a room in there that's a that they yanked off of a 
like a castle and it was the woods off from like 1600 the entire room they they took off the ceiling the walls and it's all been rec not recreated because they just put it back together and it's got that i walked into a 200 year old house that's never had air conditioning and you can smell the the age um around here henry ford museum has a bunch of houses that they moved here one of edison's uh, laboratories is there there's houses from all types of very famous people and, and a lot of them never had air conditioning so the, the wood smell and like his laboratory is is probably what it could have smelled like you know back in his time almost because it's all locked in there it, it's it absorbs it you know again if it smells foul i don't buy it if it's got a lot of a bad mildew on it i wouldn't buy it even if you you might be able to get a couple good pieces out of it that scent sometimes it, it just it just people are are bothered by it you know if they're going home and really want it, they'll spend the money on it, but still. Uh, air purifiers that uh, uses ozone. Yeah, I mean, whatever works with those. I've tried some of those. I've, the ion ones and stuff like that, too. You know. Uh, thank you, old man's picks. Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing? I had a thing with Amazon I was going to bring up, too. And I almost never have an issue, but it could have just been the, the, the buyers. I had a couple buyers, and instead, you know when it shows the in your account, because I, I don't always pay attention to my, my uh, phone at all, so I just look at it from a screen usually. I can't see the screen on my phone very well sometimes, so I, I might might not mess with it, but I've got a big wall clock now. My atomic clock, I think I showed that one out, but um, I just lost my whole train of thought there. Yeah, that, that, I guess this is the old age. I just totally lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. I've been running a mile a minute today. I got up. We had a, a, a couple of appointments I had to make, and, and it's been a long day. I'm not. I'm going to be all feeling wired all the way to the end of the evening. I probably won't go to bed till 2, two tonight, but I went to bed at 2.30 last night. Um, we'll get back to whatever I was going to say. I'm sure I'll pick it back up in a second here. Let me pop down here and see if we can get some, any more comments. Um, love toy soldiers Carl the lazy reseller I'm a big fan of of um, Mark's toys specifically when I was a kid I think everybody's done this who's collected comic books back in the 70s and 80s there was offers in the back and you'd get like a whole army and and boats and ships and a playmat it's this nice looks great and I finally saved up the money I sent it away and um, I get it, and the ships are like this big, and they were the little tiny HO basically, basically scale figures. And that's not what the ad said, but, you know, it kind of reminds me of a, a Christmas story with Drink More Ovaltine because that's how I felt as a kid, you know. I think it was like $1.95, and $1.95 for me in, in 78 or 79 was a lot of money, you know. Uh, anyway. Thanks, Rich Z. DMY... LGY, how are you doing? Avon Original Skin, so soft and plenty of time and fresh air. Avon Original Skin, so soft. I don't know if I'd want to put something like that on there. People can have allergic reactions to skin so soft. Uh, Tammy Baker, how are you doing? Antique Guy, good evening. Always put in my listings... That items are purchased from auctions of estates, those may have uh, been around smoke and pets. Yeah, I tr I try to stay away from the items to start with, but I c I never announce personally. Again, this is just me. I never announce that I get them from estate sales or auctions. I, I don't like to to put that out there because to some people, and I know it may not be a huge percentage, but to some people. It may, they're like, I don't want stuff that's been there. And I know how crazy that sounds. I mean, where do they think it's coming from in the first place? But I don't put stuff like that in there. Just like if you're a family business, I would always recommend putting that into your, your, um, who you are and, you know, your, your description there. Family run business and blah, blah, blah for your store description there. Hey, Trina, how are you doing? Good evening. Yeah, again, for those in Patreon, um, I do have a video uh, that was posted up a while ago. I did answer everybody. I did respond with some questions for some of those who uh, posted some images and things like that too. 
Uh, any, there was a couple of folks who had some issues with some technical stuff in Patreon too. Just hit me back up on that as well if you don't get any response on that from Patreon. But uh, they've always answered everything that I can think of. I don't think I've ever had anybody tell me that they didn't fix an issue for them in just a few days. Um, Brazil Review. How about Glass 16 RPM records? As of yet, but when the time comes to sell, just wondering on price range. Now, are you sure there's 16 RPMs? Are you talking about 16 inch in size? Or are you actually talking about 16 and what's it, a quarter RPM discs? Glass records are not that scarce. If they're uncut, they're blanks. A lot of those belonged in a transcription machine from some of the ones I've personally held. I've held many. In fact, I could go right now to a city probably about 40 minutes away. There's a lady who's got a whole bunch of them. I bought a few, and the 25 30 bucks for the blanks. Some of the more expensive brands, like if it's a foreign one, like a Berliner or something really weird, may go for you know 100 bucks just because of the label on, on a disc like that. If that's what you're talking about, 16 speeds usually what I run into are about yay big. Most of the 16 speeds, for those who don't know, there is a 16 speed. Most of the 16 speeds that I run into are, are transcriptions as well because they, they, they're real long play comparatively and they usually have a big hole in the center for those who have never seen one. Usually, if you buy an old. Um, like a book on tape thing, they used to be book on records. Most of those from say the 40s or so were 16 speed. And I've got some here. I've got the Holy Bible actually on 16 speed, and it's it's read. It's read by people of the day and people of the time. Um, what? Oh, I wanted to call this out because no one's actually called it out yet. In the the Hot Wheels video, the uh, California Eight, I think that's the one. There. Somebody should have called out who the who was the voice in there because it's Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone. I, I had to put that one in there. I always like the Twilight Zone. Brazil Review Two. If that's an actual record recorded with a label like of a song, it's a different story. Hey Charles, Mr. Lowe in the house too. I did see Annie. Oh, I didn't. Maybe I missed calling her out already. I apologize if I missed calling you out, Annie. Annie puts out some pretty good videos too. So if you haven't checked out Annie, I would highly recommend hopping over to Annie's channel. Very, very educated in antiques and collectibles as well. Royal is the tool method entitled to use your nose. Is the tool method in yeah, yeah, yeah. Your senses in general, and I know that may sound crazy, but my nose saved me from buying that. My nose has saved me from, you know, buying stuff and, and just the smell, and I hate to say that that's a tool, but Man, I can. People ask me all the time, "How do I know? How do you know? How do you this? How do you that?" I, I, I check it out. I use I use my eyes. I smell all that kind of stuff. There's just too many fakes out there. I'm telling you. Another reason, another thing that I would smell too, are encased coins, especially if they look a little thicker than they should be. The glue they use to seal those is not like a factory glue from, you know, the the coin graders. It's not. It's it's just a really low grade glue, and it smells. You know, it's not the only way, and you won't smell it on all of them. But that's another thing you can use that for too. Even on like pottery, I've had people reglaze things. All just all kinds of stuff. None of that stuff on vintage items should ever have a scent because of the age of it, other than like an age scent. So if you're smelling like lacquer on furniture that's, you know, 70 years old, something's wrong, you know, especially if it's a used piece. It's, it's long lost it. It's absorbed. The wood has absorbed the scent of it being out in house for, you know, decades and decades if it's vintage. You know, we've got I've got an antique dresser that, that I've had for forever. In fact, we bought it in Mississippi at a, a nice, nice lady shop in uh, the Newton area, Newton, Mississippi. It was made in like 1890. It's it's massive. It's got big carved like um, I don't know like a half a, a half of a, a column almost on either. It's a really nice piece. Maybe I'll take a picture one of these days. But it's big solid chunks of wood. It's it's a big old piece. But it's got that that age to it. It's like a museum kind of feeling to it. Um, Donald's discoveries. How are you doing? I think I hit you back on something too as well. I think you either posted or. or drop me a note black crystal how are you doing good evening uh beautiful sounds how are you doing or sounds yeah i got it that's it 
I think, sir, I was a bit late getting here, and so that's what I was assuming. Yes, yes, it is. And I know that may seem like a corny thing, as I said, but I'm telling you, my nose has saved me a lot of money. My, my, the feel of things saves me a lot of money. I, I'm, I'm like the, the Mark stuff. There's a lot of recasts out there. If I go to a show, maybe 30%, maybe 40% of the, the better pieces or are supposed to be better pieces are recasts. And I'm not saying, like when the people who do the recasts, they do a lot of recasts for things that you can't get very readily to fill off, like the Gunga tin or um, the Rin Tin Tin set, for an example, Rough Riders or something, the 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 blue colors and stuff. First, it's hard to match the color, so usually the color's off. The feel is off of the plastic. They may even have the smell, as I said. So there's all kinds of factors that I use. Postcards. I've had people glue postcards. I've had people do all sorts of things. You know, I do spray and seal stuff, but I always announce that that's done and. Similarly, with no note that, hey, this, this has been fidgeted with and stuff like that, too. There's two groups of collectors. There's a collector who wants an original. I don't want a, a single thing repaired. I don't want you to touch the patina. Don't polish it. Don't do anything. I want it dirty, d uh, dark, and, and uh, grungy looking. And there's the folks that want it pristine looking. They want to polish it up. They want it you know, bright and clean, looking like it rolled off the shelf. To me, I like, uh, if, if I've got a, a bronze lamp or something, I want to see some of that gold worn off of it and that age look, the look that it's been there forever. To me, that's cool. I like that. I really do. It's, it's, I love going to museums. We, we, I love the Henry Ford Museum. If you've never been there, that's, that's pretty cool. It's one of the, the best reasons to go to Detroit, in my opinion. I don't go down to the waterfront there, but I don't go down to the waterfront here other than Navy Week or something. Um, bum bum. Hang on, let me pop on down. I had the infamous free shipping glitch this week. Item had calculated shipping that showed that when I looked at the uh, sold listing. So it changed it after the fact. eBay for business on Facebook to help me out with the shipping credit and are supposed to having it looked at. It's exclusively on laptop, not the app. Yeah, I don't use an app for anything either. I never have, I've never listed, I'll take that back. I guess a couple times I've listed eBay. I do list Amazon many times though. While I'm in the store still. If it's in my cart, even I even haven't had it uh, paid for, I've listed stuff before I paid for it. Uh, because it's so easy on Amazon. You can just add and change and add the quantity. So if you are a, and let's say you're driving around from store to store and you're selling it as you're buying it, by the time I might hit a, a fourth or fifth store that has the same items, I could have sold a few of them already. I can just throw some more in from the store I'm at at that point. A lot of people do that if, if you're unaware. It's kind of like... Um, doing a 30-day uh, same as cash with a wholesaler or um, you know a bill laid in 30 uh, payment due in 30 days notice or like having a, a guarantee from the bank that says hey it's going to be covered and a lot of stuff like that works great like uh, um, getting a bank uh, letter of guarantee from the bank you can purchase stuff wholesale have it delivered and have like 30 days to sell enough to pay for it so at the end of the day if, if you're right you're buying the right things you were never out a single solitary dime to buy a bunch of merchandise. Get your money back right away. You know, and, and it's win-win because the people you're buying from are happy to sell it in bulk. Obviously, they would. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. And then you, you're making the money off of it. You're making the profit off of it. So, you know, it's those little insider things that can make you a lot of money in all honesty. Well, at least they're giving the credits out, but I would love to hear how much credits they've given out for uh, shipping issues. It's got to be horrendously, I mean, a ton of credit issues. Uh, I would be shocked if they're not doing it daily, constantly, all day long, in my opinion. It's got to be happening. I hear it so much, I've even had to have them do it, you know? Uh, let's see here. Pitbulls and MMA, how are you doing? Welcome in. Harry Lugo, I work for Amazon. I'm delivering packages right now. Well, there you go. What do you do with sheet music shipping policies? I just ship through PayPal or, or Pirate Ship. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm still going to ship media mail. If eBay is doing this to get people to use a more expensive method, I'm not going to do the more expensive method. I'll sell more at it. And sheet music's legally entitled to go media mail, all of it. And everybody who buys sheet music knows that. They want it to, they don't, why would I want to spend an extra four or five bucks to ship something when I don't have to? Legally, I don't have to do it. So I'm just going to ship it that way. I just cut and paste the name. 
you can actually import them into uh, Pirate Ship. Just remember to click that button. I think it says I it's authorized to go meet. There's, there's a little button you got to click. I don't remember what it says. It's just like second nature, but I'm sure most people know if you've done it for any length of time, you'll know exactly which one I'm talking about. Hey, Mary, how are you doing, Mary Ramsey? Well, thank you, the old man's picks. I love, love, love the old toys and commercials. The stuff I grew up on, I'm still very fond of. I mean, I'll never, never forget, you know, my first Hot Wheels or rolling it down the steps or, or we used to put firecrackers in them and that, that, everybody did it back then, I guess. A kid could go down to the store almost and buy a pack of firecrackers at 10 years old in my, when I was a kid. You know, cherry bombs were a thing back then. I still remember we blew up. Well, I shouldn't get into that comment, but we've done a few bad things with some 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 cherry bombs. I've never heard any animals or anything else like that, but I blew up a mailbox once by accident. It was a neighbor's, and anyway, I had to pay for it. Long story short, I was a kid. I was, you know, we didn't think it would do that, but we didn't realize we had cherry bombs, I guess. I was eight or something. It was a long time ago. I learned my lesson, let's just say. My, dad's, my dad was a military guy, so, you know, anyway... Uh, well, thank you very kindly, Harry. I saw an Amazon truck take out a station holding the second floor of our, my complex. Good thing I lived in a different building within the... Wow. That's pretty crazy. Thank you, Donald's Discoveries. Any sales have been fine until this week uh, when things have slowed down. This week, my sales just started to shoot off. But we've been listing... Yesterday, I think my my oldest was listing till midnight, and I think all told, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think he listed himself like thirty four hundred dollars worth of merchandise just in a, in a couple hours. And I know the day before we listed close to like six thousand, maybe maybe somewhere in that range. So I mean, we've been adding dollar wise a, a lot of value. And they're in categories that I'm selling a lot in now, too. So now that I've got movement and we're, we're like, I'm so close to number one in, in the vintage button categories. And I, again, I think that has a lot to do with it. We're trying to dominate some categories. I'm back into trying to dominate like four different categories now just because I see the difference every time I do something like that. With the buttons now, I, I wouldn't doubt that there's more on my phone right now or sitting over there that I have to accept, but it's been all day long. I mean, all, all day in appointments, my phone's just been click, 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 with it going off. I haven't even looked at them, honestly, because we just gave up. I don't answer um, or accept offers from the phone because I've seen glitches on the phone, and I, I don't mess with the phone hardly ever, other than, you know, an emergency use. But again, like whoever was saying it there on there, I use my laptop for everything. I, I love my laptop. It Either that or I've got a couple towers with, you know, eight cores and stuff that just are phenomenal. Um, if you ever need to upgrade something like that, too, don't go for a cheap one. Just just buy one that you can upgrade and it's got everything. It may cost you some more money in the beginning, but it'll last you a lot longer. Uh, where are we at here? Uh, Carl, the lazy reseller, about 20% down, but I'm not surprised for post-pandemic uh, July. I'm surprised I'm I'm way up. I mean, a lot. You know, 2,500 just a couple of days. I was I was really surprised because that's over and above what we would expect at this point. Today was a banner day. 400 on five sales. Old man's picks. That's pretty good. Um, sales not great for sure. Mary Ramsey, Mr. Hot Wheels. I'm down 11% overall, but my postcard sales are up. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, when I sell the vintage paper, I'm. For the most part, paper never dies off. If I, I'm listing paper constantly or listing buttons or listing the vintage stuff, it sells the whole time I'm listing it. And it's not just when I'm just now listing. I, I do I do feel if you're in a category that you have a big stake and a big footprint, and I've talked about footprints, if you have a big footprint in a category, whether it's a niche or not a niche, you get a draw. Like um, with with like buttons or, or like postcards. If, if I've got... 25, even 20% of the whole category, that means on average one in five listings are mine. If somebody's looking at 200 at a time, you know, there's what was that? That's 40 of those listings are going to be mine. So the odds are that they're going to see mine scattered out. And again, I try to get a big footprint. So if mine are scattered out through over every page that's on there, 
And the higher your percentage is of the category, the more chances you get that you're going to be seen everywhere. So they're not going to be able to avoid, avoid seeing you. If there's somebody who collects uniform buttons on eBay, I can almost guarantee you every person who buys military or government or foreign a uniform button, they know who I am. I would be shocked as can be if they didn't just because of the sheer volume. And that's, that's my sales ploy. That's what I'm working towards. I'm working towards that. You know, buttons have a scent to them, too. If you've handled a lot of buttons, even though they look clean, you know what you'll find out after you do it is your hands will be black. You'll, you'll have a brassy smell to them. You can smell the brasso even still if somebody's cleaned them. Even if they cleaned them like 50 years ago, when you handle a lot of them, you're going to smell the, the fact that somebody polished those at some point. Most military buttons were polished at least sometime during their life. So another one of those oddball things many people are wondering. Overall slow month down about 38%. I don't have my screen open, but I want to say we are 12% up um, month over last and then year over last, we are around 27% up. And those are real figures. I'll, I'll, I'll try and remember to post the actual screenshot just to show you. But I'm hammering my categories. I'm, we're not sourcing hardly unless I get stuck with that huge purchase. I'm not trying to go anyplace extra. Fourth, fourth is coming. Fourth is coming. I, I talked about this last month even. Fourth is coming. I want as many massive amounts of stuff. If if we hit you know a million, I'd love to be able to hit 1.5 by the end of the year, you know, and, and uh, that much more increase in actual online live inventory is a huge plus for your revenue. Think about the revenue. If you're doing, you know, let's say you got uh, 100,000. I'm just giving a fictitious, fictitious number. I have 100,000 listings up. On an average, I do $200,000 a year with that many listings up, sales total. So if I add another 50,000 uh, listings up, you might do seventy-five dollars to $100,000 more in sales. And a lot of that's going to come in fourth quarter for a lot of folks who are selling um, not so much vintage, but are selling like stuff christmas types of items and stuff like uh, nos ra and things like that you know it for those like the question earlier about if i'm new what should i do learning stuff like that knowing when to list stuff knowing what's you know better categories to mess with understanding your your profit margins your roi your return on your investment um all of that's important. That's why, again, I, I stick to the low-lying fruit because it's dirt cheap and I still make a pretty decent profit. I don't have to fight to get it. Um, I don't care if it's got some damage because most people ignore it because of that. So it's super easy to get. It, it's, it's super easy to store. It's super easy to list. It's super easy to ship. I, I mean, there's I don't have much drawbacks in it. I almost never have a return on any of the stuff that we sell unless somebody didn't read the, the description um, I had a couple returns the other day where they tried to say I misrepresented it and completely not the case because they were claiming I stated the size that I didn't. And, you know, and in the end of the day, I did the, the routine and you got to report it to eBay if they filed a false return. Even though I do free returns, if they file something false, I block them. I move on and I never deal with them again. I don't care if they file a return like that. It's handled differently and I don't want to be dinged for somebody saying I, re I, I handled something inappropriately. I don't do that. So anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Let's see what else we got going on here. Um, Pitbulls and MMA. My jewelry has been selling like crazy. eBay and Etsy. Again, it depends on what you have. If you've got collectible jewelry, vintage costume jewelry sells incredibly well if you get the right pieces. I've been I've got a box of like 300 just fab pieces somewhere in here that's been in a box since we've moved five six seven years ago which i've been looking for forever and i know it's here but we've got so much inventory i really want to i want to do a video on some of it because there's some uh really nice designer pieces signed and named pieces from the 30s and 40s in there and i really want them out because i want to have them up for christmas but anyway if you didn't know costume jewelry high-end costume jewelry goes up for christmas people give it as gifts husbands to the wives you know i bought my wife some very nice pieces she's got a massive moonstone in the shape of a heart that's like that big i mean it, it's it's a it's the biggest one i've ever seen in my life and she fell in love with it and that was a gift i got her actually so vintage jewelry sells extreme i buy vintage jewelry for my wife and i know most of the people who are like me that i know and i've, I've you know talked to for years do the same thing you know i, I buy it secondhand she doesn't care it's, it's the piece itself 
She likes the older. It's a vintage piece too. It's, maybe I've shown it in a video, but it's a massive, massive moonstone. It's got that just awesome iridescent look to the inside. It's just a nice stone if you don't know what I'm talking about. Look it up, please. Uh, Charles, very slow. Uh, sales here, worse I've ever seen in 20 years. Wow. I don't know what you're selling specifically, so again, I, I don't want to make any you know, assumptions on any of that. We list all the time, and I, I don't. I, I'm telling you, that's a big plus, because if we list all the time in similar categories, even if you know they're they're buying something because I just listed it, most of the time I can garner a, a big push from other items similar to that or in the exact, exact same category. That brings them in. You know, and, and then they'll see that. And, well, what else does the guy have? I've got a statement. I've got the biggest, one of the biggest uh, collections of buttons. People see that. Or I've got so many postcards, so many trade cards. People see those statements and they look. And right below where I've got that statement, I've got check out my items. Here's my store. And they can just click and instantly go to see whatever they want. And off they go. Plus, I have my categories in my store listed on the side of the bottom of the listing. So they can instantly pop around. I mean, Usually I get add-on sales. I mean, it's a constant thing. I put something on a 10% sale just the other day. Somebody came in, watched it. I sent, I think it was another 5% off. And again, I'm a 3x price to begin with, so I'm already ahead of the game no matter what, even at 15% off. So they took it. And on top of that, they took something else similar to it from the exact same category from another steamship line at just a few dollars less than my initial asking price and the item was listed six months ago. So right off the bat, I got a bump for me putting the sale on. I got a, a, a bump when they saw the other items similarly related to it. And I sold two items, doubled my, more than doubled because the, the older item was $59 and the item that they, we took the offer on was far less than that. So, you know, I play with, with the store. I'm constantly working our store. So that's, that's a good thing to do. I would constantly look back and check prices, check titles, check keyword. <clears throat> Sandra L. I went eight days without any sales. Just made one year uh, selling on eBay. Not sure what is going on. It just looks bad for the overall month. Excuse me. <clears throat> Swallowed down the wrong. Um, again, I, I've heard a lot of people say that. I, if you're new as a, as a new seller, it's going to take some time to get used to. I'm telling you right off the bat. If I had to source from uh, my dog's got to be down here somewhere. If I had to source off the street, I couldn't survive here. I don't think I could. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I don't think I could if I had to source going around the garage, especially now with the pandemic. I don't see any way I could do it around here. Now, I've been taking my youngest son out driving and stuff so he can get his license. Uh, we put it on hold with everything going on with this with his medical issue and stuff, and um, I I see garage sales here and there, but I mean they're they're big ones that just it's not much there. I just I can't, couldn't imagine having to go and be the first one and fighting all the other people around here that are doing it, and it's a lot of people. Uh, the competition around here has has gotten pretty stiff for for those types of things like garage sales and stuff like that. Now there is going to be a there there is a flea market we're going to shortly. Uh, in fact, that's, it's actually this weekend we're going to a couple flea markets. It's a little drive away, but we're going to take a shot. I'm taking my my son, probably shoot some videos from it. Who knows what's there? I haven't been to a flea market like that in quite some time, other than like stopping in to pick up something from somebody. But uh, Let's see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hang on, I think I lost my spot. Oh, yeah, I think I'm just off the track here. I'm sorry. Dusty Hill from ZZ Top passed away. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't realize he was still putting records out to just a couple of years ago. Last time I heard anything from them was when ZZ Top was on the radio, honestly. Um, it's not somebody I, I necessarily followed, but I, I like Sharp Dressed Man and... Um, she got legs and a couple of, or legs I think it's called and I won't mention another title but they've they've got a handful of songs that I really liked. Um, I did love the imagery though with them the two guys with the long beard and the guitar that swung it pivoted around. Uh, I thought that was cool back then. It was like the it was like the meme of the day I guess or a gif or something. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, Royal, I'm getting $1 offers. People must be offended at my prices. I have one sale on the past, uh, Richie Z. Luckily, my company got me back working. Wanda Greer, howdy from NC, North Carolina. Welcome. Um, I mean, I can't speak for, for everybody's sales. I, I can't say that, but if you're new again, it, it's going to take you time to figure out what to sell. The low-lying fruit for, for many of you may be clothing. And, and I, I know a lot of people love clothing, and I know there's there's money to be made. But, if again, if, if I had to live with clothing around here, uh, I'd be dead. There'd be no way I could survive doing clothing here in this city. I, I, I don't know anybody who could do that around here. It, there's just not enough places. Most of the, the thrift, there's been, in one building out here, on, on Reynolds Road, there was a thrift store, three different thrift stores in the same building. Each one of those ran out of business. Savers ran ran out of business to the same store. Goodwill sends their better stuff to their own private um, web page. You know, and that's about it. There's some small mom and pa that you might get lucky and get a handful of things. Other than that, it's I'd be stuck garage sales in fighting to be the first one in the door at a flea market, knowing that the people selling at the flea market do eBay and I'd have to compete with them and hope that they missed something. It just doesn't work for us around here that way. That's why I, I go for quantity. I don't have to fight. It's easy. Maybe, you know, extra work with listing massive quantity, but I'm, there's so much up, it sells all the time. You know, that's the point. Quantity overrules anything else. You know, and with what I list, I keep saying this, and people still, still, I guess, people that still don't get it. I go for how much value I can list an hour. Four or five hundred dollars in merchandise an hour, that's what matters. And if I can list multiple items at the same time, it makes my footprint bigger. So maybe I'm not selling at all, but it, it draws more attention to the store, which then increases my sales overall. I mean, it, it's a, it's a win win. Uh, let's see here. I try to go under by the estimated taxes on the items. Ron Popeil died yesterday, too. Yeah, um, what was he? The the Ronco bottle cutter and all that kind of stuff, too, I think. Excuse me, I don't mean to do that. <clears throat> I'm going to have to end it here in a minute. I think my dog's crawling around here. <clears throat> hey, Dom, primetime treasure hunter in the house tonight. Hope you're doing well, Dom. Excuse me, boy. I've been busy at meetings and appointments all day, so I guess I've talked my voice off today. <clears throat> Great buy, uh, vibes for more sales. I need them. Richie Z. Always better to undergrade uh, grade if you have to. Yeah, I undergrade everything record-wise. If I have any doubt, it goes under. Everything. Whatever I'm grading. Comics, toys... I'd rather have them be happy that I undergraded it and they were ecstatic than have them be disappointed that I overgraded it. I had somebody leave a long feedback today. Not real long, but it was nice, awesome, fabulous, better than expected. I hear that I, I, I hear that all the time, and you can look through my feedback to see, but I'd rather, you know, um, under promise and then over uh, you know, over enthuse them when they see how good the item is or something along that line. I think I worded that wrong, but yeah, I think you get the gist of it. Pitbulls and MMA. Well, hopefully that's that's a kind one. I need a 16 RPM record player to check <clears throat> out those glass records. Uh, you'll need an older one, chances are. I've got a vintage one. Um, uh, there's some good pioneers that have 16 speed on them. If there's no labels on them, it's just a solid sheet of glass with no like song tiles or anything else like that. It's probably like a dictation record, in all honesty. It's probably like a yellowish color maybe um translucent as well <clears throat> angels don't fall how are you doing never seen a glass lp yeah, i've I, I have some around here i've got a couple here that i never did end up getting rid of but they're not as rare as you would think i thought oh wow a glass record when i first saw it and then i looked into it and i'm like oh it's a transcript record i did play it but um. Yeah, fourth. I mean, fourth quarter is coming. I'm gonna end it off at this conversation. My throat's now bugging me. And 
I want to blow my nose. I have allergic reactions sometimes to the dog hair. Love my dogs to death, though, so anyway. We'll end it on there. I hate to kind of run off here, but my, I'm really, I don't want to blow my nose, and my nose is plugged up right now bad. So I do a thank everybody for coming on tonight. Hopefully you did enjoy the conversation. If you haven't hit the thumbs up yet and you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up. It does help the channel. Uh, again, I did have another video up this morning on Hot Wheels. Uh, I have a Patreon video that I put up just a few hours ago, I think around two or so. It's the second half. It's another, it's 35 minutes or so. It's on those same topics I told you have gotten hot for those in Patreon. So check it out. If you've got any other questions, I will be on Patreon on Saturday morning too. So if you post questions today, they will be answered by Saturday as well for those in Patreon. So uh, I do appreciate it. Sorry I didn't get to everybody's conversation. I knew I know I do rattle a little bit and carry on. But uh, I do appreciate everybody coming on again. If you haven't hit that like button, please hit the like button. Share and tell your friends. <laughs>